You are watching Turkish American Television. Welcome to the Turkish American Hour. I'm Gökşin Kerry. We have Mark Mayrowitz, attorney and professor at Sunny Maritime College with us today. And he's going to talk about his visit to Northern Cyprus. What are your memories, Mark? Very, very uh, powerful memories. Uh, Northern Cyprus is like walking into a world that's invisible. Unfortunately, the world has forgotten Northern Cyprus. Um, you go to Turkey, then you take a plane, and you, la you land at Erjan International Airport. And then you drive through the area, and it is really quite desolate, surprisingly, for reasons that we can talk about, mm -hmm. because it's been isolated by the world. And then coming to Girne, to this beautiful hotel, the Colony Hotel, which is a five-star hotel, as nice as any hotel I've ever seen in the world. So there you are in a place which basically, according to the Republic of Cyprus, does not exist. Um, it's very, very unfortunate. But uh, um, I found the people there to be very, um, still very optimistic, um, young people that are well-educated, young people that, are, that have ambitions, and business people that want to build northern Cyprus. Lots of energy, lots of enthusiasm. And to my mind, that if the South could work with the North, they could solve all their problems. Water, electricity, bailouts, you name it. Energy, and resources, economy. and economy. Um, we met with a number of business people from the Chamber of Commerce. And mm -hmm. they really have a plan for developing the area and doing great things. The only issue is they're isolated. Um, a cruise ship cannot. Uh, cannot stop there. A plane cannot go directly to Erzhan International Airport. It's, it's very, very, uh, it's actually quite bizarre, to what be very candid. What do you candid. think they should do? Well, I think that there have been a couple of plans that have been promoted, mm -hmm. like the Anan plan. Mm -hmm. uh, that plan would have created really a central government with a bizonal arrangement. The Turkish, Cypri uh, Turkish Cypriots approved it, mm -hmm. but the Greek Cypriots disapproved it. Mm -hmm. um, now we see this whole issue with the bailout of Greece and the bailout of the Republic. And once again, um, I would hope that the Greek Cypriots would look to the opportunity to have a win-win situation to be able to work with the North, particularly with the fact that um, there's a lot of um, intellectual energy and intellectual ability mm -hmm. in both parts of the island, but they're not working together. Mm -hmm. And the energy and the resources that have been found in the Mediterranean could also solve a lot of the monetary problems if they would work together. What I understood was the situation is that the people are, are so um, disconnected from each other. Uh, they don't get together in Starbucks and have a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And that was my hope and prayer that they would get together and work together and put aside all of this history, I know it's easy for me to say, and try to work for the betterment of the island. Which is teamwork is very important. Exactly. And your conversation with the president? Yes, I had the privilege of meeting with the president. I was with another group of uh, journalists and academics. And um, he's a very impressive individual. He's mm -hmm. a doctor uh, by profession originally, a very serious person. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I, I have great hopes that with um, with President Erolu on the Turkish side and this mm -hmm. new President uh, Anastasiadis, mm -hmm. that maybe they can be pragmatic, and particularly the Greek Cypriots, because I think the, the will is there on the part of the TRNC. The, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is there, and to be very candid, it's there to stay. It's, it's there. It's not going anywhere. Um, and so it would be very helpful if uh, the Republic of Cyprus would start to come to grips with the reality that it's there, mm -hmm. that there are Turkish Cypriots also, and that they have to work with them, and that they can work with them, and put aside these, these historical differences and try to work up a win-win, mm -hmm. water, electricity, you name it. All these problems that they have there could be solved by what you call was teamwork. Yeah, hopefully that will get <laughs> done uh, soon. And would you like to add more on Cyprus? We're going to go back to Turkey. Well, I think that, uh, as I said, the, uh, what impressed me was the, um, the quality of the people I met there. Uh, the beauty of the, of the whole area is just is staggering. It's gorgeous, particularly from the top of the hotel. The weather you as see. well, yeah. And the, but the weather, I have to say, weather was beautiful, but I was there in July uh, <laughs> and actually saw and attended the military parade on July 20th. That's the hottest place in the world. I know, I mean, this is, I know from tourism point of view, I know people went to the beach, but 
it was very, very hot. So, and I'm, not, I'm actually not a big beach person, but the fact of the matter is that it was beautifully, spectacular, be spectacularly beautiful, particularly the view from the roof of the hotel. Wow. And that hotel, as I said, the hotels that, that I went to were as nice or nicer than any hotel in the entire world. So if you go there, you can have a fantastic time. And I urge people to go there, and they'll really enjoy themselves. And it's very reasonable, too, oh, price-wise. Now let's travel to Turkey. Would you like to Always love to travel your, to Turkey. <laughs> right. Would you like to tell us about your uh, teaching? In right, I, I was teaching. I had a fellowship in uh, July, to, in the summer of 2011, mm -hmm. at the Istanbul Technical uh, University. And I taught there for three weeks. And I taught uh, English conversation. This is what they wanted, actually. I, I, was, I was offering to teach whatever they needed. And at that particular point, 25 professors of engineering and mathematics signed up for a course with me just to do English conversation. <clears throat> and it was a tremendous amount of fun. I made a lot of friends. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to be with, I mean, it's not, I also teach Turkish students at SUNY Maritime College, uh, where I teach English. But to teach adults is really more collegial. And you really you spend time with them. We, had, we were sitting in the cafeteria. We had tea. We had cookies. I had my favorite food, which was tost. You know, uh, uh, the, the cheese, uh, it's a grilled cheese sandwich, but it's uh, fantastic. And um, I think it's kashali toast, it's called. Kashali, kashali toast. toast. And I would sit there, and we would actually have these great conversations. You learn a lot about people when you have the, sit them and say, have a conversation about something. I, and I learned an enormous amount about Turkish culture and uh, Turkish people. Uh, and I have to say that my professor students were gracious and hospitable as every Turk I've ever met is. It's just, they're just wonderful. What do you say about the uh, Turkish students, about the learning skills? Is it slow or they can catch up very quickly? I, I have to tell you that I am so impressed with my kids. I love my kids. I call them my shojuklar. I don't think they, <laughs> they you know, I don't think they like that, but I, they may arrenjilar, but they're also my shojuklar. And I have to say that I have been so lucky with the students that I've had at SUNY Maritime in terms of their English skills. This semester, for example, we've done, uh, we did Robert Frost's poem about two roads diverged into wood. We did a couple of fantastic short stories and really we had the fantastic discussions about it and very deep discussions and they really get it. They really understand the stories and the poems. That makes it fun for me and it's fun for them because they're really learning something and they learn some English along the way. So their skills are very good. I mean, the <clears throat> fine tuning skills, that's really what I'm doing. I'm fine tuning their skills and also um, you know, helping them with, you know, for example, um, you know, one of the things I have them do is write emails. You know, email today, every, everybody writes everything by email. I mean, everything, no, people don't yeah. actually meet anymore yeah. in person. So I said Which to them, not nice, well, it's, not, it's the way the world now. is, you know. So I said to them, you know, you've re we're going to work on emails because you're going to communicate with people. You're going to look for a job. You're going to do something. You're going to do that in English in an email. So let's write emails. And so we write emails out. We correct them. Um, as I said, we do emails. We do short stories. We do poetry. And it's just a lot of fun. And also, it's just I enjoy teaching Turkish students because we also switch words. So if I do an English word, I ask them what it is in Turkish. So we end up so uh, learning. learning. Yeah, Turkish and I remember, well. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, somebody told a professor at SUNY Maritime College that I teach the Turkish students Turkish. <laughs> but I, I said, well, this isn't true. I'm teaching them English. No, 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 but he talks, but he speaks Turkish too. But he speaks Turkish also. So it's a, it's a great cross-cultural experience for me. And I love Turkey. So when I'm with my students, I get a, a feeling of, Turkey and I get a feeling and uh, it's, it's very nice for me, nostalgic for me because I love my time in Turkey so much. So will this project continue? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, I will Every, continue. Every year? In terms of the uh, teaching you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a regular thing that I've been doing now for, for quite a while. And How inshallah, long? it will continue for about long? three, four years or so. Oh, that's good. And uh, the different group, you know, we have students that come on our dual diploma program, so we have different students and I get them at a particular point. And, we spend a semester together and we have a lot of fun. And I also take them on field trips. I'm hoping to take them on a field trip. I took one group uh, to the Turk Evi, to the Turkish consulate. And we had tea with my friend uh, Aisha Hanum, who was the deputy consul general. It was like, it was very nice for them because it was a taste of home. 
They go to the Turkish consulate for them and have tea in and, and, and the Turkish consulate is like a feeling of home for them and they're very far from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're probably going to go somewhere in the city to Turkish cafe and maybe I'll take them to the consulate again. So. And you're writing a book on Turkish? Yes, um, I have a... Um, foreign uh, policy. I yes, guess, on huh? Turkish foreign policy. And what I'm looking at is um, really uh, looking at Tur Turkish uh, perspectives on the world. In other words, how does Turkey look at the world, where it sits in the region, what are its, its issues and its needs, its perspectives and its foreign policy. And what do you say? Well, I say mm -hmm. is that Turkey is in a very, very difficult position in where it's located mm -hmm. in the region. It's very strategically located, mm -hmm. but it also has now some formidable challenges. For example, with Syria. I mean, that is a great, I give, I, I would uh, take my hat off and toss my hat to the Turkish government that said to Syria, you know, you've got to stop this uh, horrific bloodshed and we'll take refugees. Now the problem is Turkey's taken all those refugees mm -hmm. and, and it's really become an issue. What, what's going to be the end game here? What are we going to do with the refugees? We need to help them, but how are we going to help them? Mm -hmm. And you know, hopefully on Kerry's last trip, uh, they talked about this because there has to be some solution to that problem. Also, the, uh, the recent, uh, which I think also a co very commendable um, peace process with the, with the Kurdish uh, terrorists is a, uh, probably could be one of the great developments in Turkish history if it can come true. Because that issue has been a tremendously pressing issue for Turkey, an existential issue. I always tell people, that's an existential issue for Turkey and people don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. You have to understand how important this is. And the fact that the government has reached out to try to work out a, a compromis, a, a, a settlement, is very, very commendable. And I'm hoping and praying that it will come true. Because and, it will be very, very good for Turkey. And when this book is coming out? Well, I'm working on it. Working. So I'm trying to hopefully complete it you know, by the end of this year. I and hope so. And you're also a member of uh, a couple of... Turkish. Right, I'm active in a number of Turkish organizations. Um, and which one? Uh, I'm an advisor to the president of the ATAA, Assembly of Turkish American Associations, and will be on a panel at the conference that's coming up in, uh, in April. And also I'm an advisor to the president of the FTAA, uh, Ali Chinar, and we, we do tremendous things uh, together. He just, he's a terrific, terrific, uh, he, he just does a terrific job, and so, so does uh, Ergun Bey at uh, ATAA. And I'm also on the advisory board of the American Turkish Council, which is a fantastic organization, and a board member of the Turkish American Chamber of Commerce. I guess I sound Wonderful. like I spend all my time doing things related to Turkey, <laughs> which I do. I live, I breathe Turkey, but I love Turkey. Turkey a yisav So wonderful. I love Turkey. How wonderful. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much my for being pleasure. with us here, Mark. It was my pleasure. Thank you for watching Turkish American Hour. I'm Gökşin Kere. Hoşçakalın. Goodbye.